There is a quiet, purposeful transformation happening across government, industry and in the community that's bringing fundamental change to the lives of people in New South Wales. Digital Twin is at the heart of smart cities because it's essentially a laboratory where you can do all your digital modelling before you actually lay the foundations in, in the real environment. Meticulous data helped the New South Wales government navigate through the pandemic. Now data from the physical and built environment is charting the road to the future. There's no question that there is a big push at the moment around what's the, what's the way out of this pandemic? What's the economic and productivity st stimulus we can create? This is one of those things. This is one of the key things that I think will be critical to making sure we come out of this and speed up what we want to do in terms of recovery. It's becoming an integral part of our planning and it's something that, that we think will be what good governments do for interaction with their citizens and planning going forward. The IT, to which Simon Hunter refers, is spatial digital twin, precision 3D modelling of the physical and built environment. The government says the sum total of these parts will help streamline services, inform decision making and reduce expenditure. So we'll check this out now and see if it's right to go for tomorrow. Yeah. There may be no more vital role for spatial services than during extreme weather emergencies, increasing in number and scale. Over the past couple of years, we've obviously had huge fires and unprecedented floods, and we use this aircraft to capture imagery of those events, which then are used by emergency services to make decisions on the ground, um, how to support people in life or death situations. From the condition of the sandstone bricks at Fort Denison, the detailed contours of the majestic Blue Mountains, or new lighting for the Janolan Caves, our world's being mapped and charted on all levels, but people are still at the centre of this picture. We are living in a technology age where data and information is key, but it's the human knowledge and how we actually are able to leverage and utilise the tools and the data to gain greater learnings, greater insights, create new products, create new services. There is another layer, history, that brings a four-dimensional element to this rich story. Take Penrith, just 17 years ago. I might uh, you take that back to 2004, so we can see actually how much has wow. changed. How many people have moved to the area? How many people, have this, or, or how land has been subdivided? It's not just cities and big population centres that stand to reap the benefits of spatial digital twin. It will also have a big impact on regional centres, like here in Bathurst, which will help bridge that city-country divide. We don't talk about smart cities, we talk about smart places, and that's to be inclusive of regional areas. And that's the advantage of the New South Wales Digital Twin. We are extending it out to the whole of New South Wales, so it won't just be for the, the built-up areas like your Sydney, Wollongongs and, and Newcastle. Indeed, Bathurst is the centre of the Department of Customer Services Spatial Service Universe, where vast amounts of data are processed every day, each piece being linked to a giant mosaic, soon to be available to millions of users. That's the way we try and do things always. We try and start small, prove the model, get it in the hands of customers. Those customers, again, being industry, government and citizens now as well, uh, get feedback, you know, improve, improve, improve and scale. So that's, that's the approach we always try and take and I think it's proving, proving that out with this, with this program as well. So Simon, is this literally the key to the door? It's fundamental. I don't think without the spatial digital twin, we could build the cities of the future that we need to and the places of the future that people expect.